Our story begins with a disgruntled group of assemblers. Day after day, the line fed them the old clevis pin and cotter pin combo, which made their assembly of whatchamacallits a series of frustrating missteps. So, one day on lunch break, the guys elected Earl to talk to the boss and demand change. Today on Engineering Newswire, brought to you by PivotPoint, the leading designer and manufacturer of non-threaded fastener solutions, we're sweeping the sky with inspection robots, exploring hidden tombs with autonomous robots, and using gophers to detect bombs in the Middle East. Millionaire businessman James McCormick is a terrible person. Maybe he's simply an overzealous marketing aficionado who struck gold when he found a niche market demand, but I think it's safe to say that selling fake bomb detectors to terrorism hotspots makes you less the entrepreneur and more the menace to society. McCormick has been found guilty of fraud after selling his gopher novelty golf ball finder as a device capable of finding explosives, drugs, and people from planes, underwater, underground, and through walls. He made $76 million on a toy that he claimed to bypass all known forms of concealment. What's that saying? If it seems too good to be true? The handheld devices sold for more than $40,000 each and were found to have no working components or any grounding in science. As a matter of fact, you could buy the same device in American novelty shops for $20. Ouch. More than 6,000 products were sold to countries rife with terrorism, and nobody noticed that they came in a little light. No one was curious and popped open a panel. I understand that you might fear some big wig reciprocity if you pry open a $40,000 anti-terror tool, but somebody had to be wary of this little toy as they were running it around cars at checkpoints. Turns out that all you need to launch a new product is a pocket full of fairy dust and a handful of lies. But unfortunately, we already know that that's what separates good engineers from great marketers. Inspecting power lines is not the safest of tasks, usually involving the power to be completely shut off or employing a complex ballet of helicopters, protective clothing, and elaborate static charge equalizing materials. Today's robots that carry out such dangerous inspections are large, complex, and expensive. University of California San Diego's Nick Morzowski has developed the Skysweeper power line inspection robot using off-the-shelf electronics and plastic parts printed on an inexpensive 3D printer. Looking a bit like a cable car for squirrels, the current design is V-shaped and uses a motor-driven elbow in the middle that pivots the arms. The arms have clamps at their ends that alternately grasp and release the cables to inch the robot along. While the elbow motor is currently powered by an off-the-shelf battery, Mozowski says it would be possible to equip the robot with induction coils so that it could be powered indefinitely by the power line itself. Heck yeah! Yeah! I have a saying, which is, technology is a reverse engineering of nature. And a new project from the Biorobotics Laboratory, BioRob for short, is a perfect example of this. BioRob recently demonstrated the Salamandra Robotica 2, a snake-like robot that can swim, crawl, and walk. The robot helps him explore how the nervous system, specifically in the spinal cord, works. The robot's high-level brain need only to send simple commands for the body to execute complex motion, just like how you or I don't have to put much thought into walking or how to stand. The complex, low-level calculations are handled by microcontrollers and other circuitry distributed throughout its body. And, like some lizards, parts can even be lobbed off and it will continue to function. Growing back on their own, that's probably a few revisions away. What does a terrestrial drone touting a webcam have in common with the Aztec Temple of the Plumed Serpent? Nothing. Up until now. An autonomous robot known as Talak 2 will travel through an unexplored tunnel beneath the Great Temple. The three-foot-long robot is equipped with arms to manage any obstacles along the way. With an infrared camera mounted on its helm, the vehicle operates autonomously while providing images to its human counterparts. The tunnel is believed to lead to a chamber that's almost 2,000 years old, probably a place where dignitaries of the pre-Columbian city received their investiture or were buried. That's dead body, dead body. But Talak is actually a deployable collection of three different robotic systems. Once inside the main chamber, a second vehicle coined a robot bug is programmed to unpack itself and descend based on instructions from a computer. 
It measures 40 centimeters with outstretched arms and will take infrared scans of the interior, relaying the info back to its human coworkers. Finally, a smaller wing contraption will eventually be deployed to capture video footage inside the chamber. Did you catch that? That's three drones in one exploring hidden temples of the Aztecs. Now, I finally have something to help me explore the inner chasms of my basement. <laughs> Do you have story ideas? Comment below and we'll cover them in an upcoming episode. For PD and DTV, I'm David Manti and this has been your Engineering Newswire. boss listened to the guys and hired the engineers at Pivot Point to solve the heretofore fastener conundrum. Using mathematical equations beyond the comprehension of most mortals, a device called the Slick Pin was devised. Slick as in self-locking implanted cotter pin. Soon the line was feeding the assemblers the new Slick Pin. Frustration gave way to jubilation, and hard hats were traded in for party hats, not to mention balloons, confetti, and kazoos. So, turn your assembly into revelry with slick pins from Pivot Point.